Hello everyone, very good morning. You are watching my YouTube channel, CloudX India. So guys, in previous video, I have uploaded uh, about Active Directory. What is the Active Directory and what is the difference between uh, work group and standalone environment and Active Directory environment, right? Why to use the Active Directory uh, services, right? So we discussed in the last video and today I'm going to cover and discuss about the Active DS, uh, Active Directory database services and LDAP protocol as well. Okay, so this is the second day session. So guys, stay tuned and watch the video. And also, guys, please do subscribe my channel if you like the content. Okay, so suppose you have uh, you have a domain, uh, right? You have configured a domain cloudxindia.local, right? And there are multiple sites you are using. So once you promote any DC, right? Once you create the domain services on any of the system, what happened? So the domain services will create two folder. One is the NTDS and other one is the syswall. So NTDS, inside the NTDS folder, there is a fo file that created, which is known as the NTDS.dit, okay? So this is the actual file where all object stores, okay? Whatever the you create users, computer, group, whatever you are creating, right, inside the, uh, your Active Directory services, the all information is stored inside this particular database, okay? And suppose uh, the domain environment is spread across multiple uh, locations or sites, so what happens? So suppose you have another domain controller in different regions or location, and the third is suppose you have total four domain controller, okay? So once you promote another domain controller, what happened? So during the promotion, the other DC, suppose DC2, while you are promoting the DC to what happens, so it also create a folder, two folder, right? NTDS and syswall. And all the domain controller do the same thing, okay? And guys, it's a very interesting, right? So this, this NTDS.DIT on DC 2, 3, or 4, it's a replica of the DC 1, okay? During the creation, what happened if this DC domain controller are in the so, same domain, so what happens? So it replicate synchronize the whole information whatever the object are stored here whatever suppose you have created two three hundred thousand objects here right it replicate the whole information with the dc2 and in the same way if you promote dc34 it happens on other domain controller as well so you can say that ntds.dit in the same domain is it's a kind of it's a replica of other domain controller okay so take an example suppose you have a created user here on dc1 which is user one. So what happens once you create the user, it is stored inside the NTDS.DIT, okay? And once it, so since this is the two different site, I have presented as a site here. So what happens? So during the replication interval, once the replication start, what happened? The DC1 replicate this the same information with the DC2 and the user one, will be available on DC2 as well. And in the same way, what happened? DC2 also replicate this information to the DC3. DC3 also replicate the same information to the DC4 as well. And if suppose if you make any changes of on any of the domain controller, either on DC4, 3 or 2, what happened? So suppose if you uh, change information from DC4, uh, you added some uh, like groups or it become uh, part of any uh, other groups or you change the password or what happened so it replicate the information with dc1 and as well as dc3 because this is the connected together uh, the sites are connected together and in the same way as soon as dc3 received the information what happened it replicate with the dc2 the same thing happened right so this is the identical information right inside the domain environment okay whatever the changes you made it will replicate throughout all the domain controller okay so there are lots of things about the ntds.dit which i have to cover like uh, ntds partition sites and services so many things i have to cover right so this is just introduction guys so stay tuned and watch till the end and in next section you have to remember something right you have to keep some point in your mind so what are those things so first of all ntds.dit right so since this is the database ntds.dit but do you know what is the name of full form of the ntds.dit it is known as new technology directory service the first part ntds is known as new technology directory service and dot dit dit is known as directory information tree 
Second point, each DC in domain has NTDS database, which is a replica of other. So keep in mind this point. All the DC have same object information. Means if there is a user, name is user USR1, and if it replicate to the other DC, the information will remain same. There is no changes in the object properties. Okay, and if you made any changes, it will replicate throughout all the domain controller. That is the reason all the DC have the same in object information. The entities.dit size can be crow till or it's a 16 TB and it store 2 billion object or records. It's good to keep or it's good to store your NTDS into another disk other than its default location. Default location means system drive, C drive. Okay, so it's always recommended, highly recommended even by Microsoft to keep your NTDS and syswall folder in different drive like D drive, F drive, whatever the drive, other drive you are using. It provides hierarchical structure. So what is the hierarchical structure? So this is the picture, right? You can understand, okay? So in this picture, you can see I have a domain, right? So cloudxindia.local, this is our domains. So this is the first hierarchy of my domain or directory services. And then I have a created a OU. OU name is home or there are multiple others. OU and containers are available. And inside the OU, I have a created users, so, right? So basically, it provides the logical uh, isolation, right? So you can logically isolate your domain environment, right? You can create multiple OUs, okay? You can define, you can suppose uh, reason wise you can create the OU, right? And you keep your user or uh, move your user according to that particular OU for the isolation to search the OU uh, like uh, in a faster way, okay, to apply the policies, to apply the permissions. There are so many things uh, which you can use uh, to isolate the environment, right? Group policy and so many other things. So it provides the hierarchical structure like this, okay? And uh, guys, do you know how to access the directory services? Like if you are accessing any users, ntds.dit, so which service or protocol do we use to access the directory information? Suppose from a local computer or from a remote computer, you are trying to search some users, right? As you do the job uh, on daily basis. So once you access the directory services and search some user to join some group or something, right? Or uh, giving the access to any files or folder, right? So. Uh, which service basically help you to call the directory service suppose uh, okay so let me give an example here so take an example you have a directory service here this is your directory and this is your file server okay and in the file server you have a folder name is sales and under the sales folder you want to give permission to this users okay so what happen once you go into the sales folder properties and in shares and security what happened you have to add the users so once you like uh, go into the into the property and search user usr1 right it it present you right y user will pop up there and then you add the users inside the shares and security or in the same way if you are joining the this user into any others group right so how basically which service basically called this is since this is the a different server and ad is not installed here and once you are searching so some there is some services which is calling this information from directory or active directory to the server so which service are we using here right so in this uh, next slide i'll talk about this one so we are using the LDAP protocol. So it's LDAP is known as lightweight directory access protocol. So what does basically LDAP do? So LDAP is the protocol, right? It's a core protocol behind your Active Directory services. Okay. All directory access is performed through it. So all directory access, if you are fetching some information, you are searching some object from either from the console directory directly or from any other servers as i saw the example of file server right so every time your ldap will help you to pull the record from your directory server 
you can even say uh, LDAP is a way of speaking to the directory services, Active Directory. Okay. It access the directory object as a distinguished name to identify the object. When I say the distinguished name, so what does it mean? Okay. So take an example. So I have uh, the same pictures again here. Okay. So suppose you want to access this user. So before understanding how to access the user, take an example. You have uh, some files or folder inside your C drive. Okay. Inside your local drive, which is the C drive. Okay, system drive. And how will you access? Like, what is the way of accessing the files or folder from the drive? So, how do you access? You mention first you go inside the C, then users, then project.txt, and then you hit and access. The format of accessing is this C drive, C colon, okay, slash users, project.txt, right? But in the directory services, when LDAP call any directory or any object, right, from the Active Directory, so in which format does it uh, basically access it? So in LDAP example, I have mentioned here. So take an example. Suppose uh, so. First of all, what does it do? In the file, you first access the parent folder, but uh, in your uh, Active Directory format, when LDAP call to the directory service, so suppose you are searching a user, so it first mention the user's information like c and canonical name you can say and then it call to the right it it write write the information in this format then it write the information of ou where this user actually belong or located and then it call it reach to the which level domain cloudx and then dot local also consider as a domain controller dot local and in in the format if i say the format so the format will looks like this cn equal users home equal uh, sorry ou equal home dc equal cloudx india dc equal local so this is the format of ldap right how does it access and provide the information to you so guys that's all in today's topic for the ldap and database i hope you enjoy and uh, if there is any feedback or suggestion please feel free to comment okay and also guys do subscribe my channel so this is not enough for active directory so there is a lot about the ntds.dit which i will cover and also in next video i'll uh, give some more idea about ldap how does it work okay so guys stay tuned Subscribe the channel, share with your friend, okay, like it, and also you can reach out to me on Facebook MS CloudX. So, guys, thanks again for watching the video.